All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of Oop to Premium. And now we're going to discuss some advanced game topics, including what to do about this guy. Master Grover. Uh, so if you know, if you've played a lot of UFTA, you, you know that uh, the pattern of the game usually follows one where when you get into the advanced stages of purchases in the resource shop, um, what happens is um, the farm crew is usually the, the most valued item. You know, it confers uh, so many benefits to you that uh, it's kind of easy to just steamroll people after you get it. It's almost an anticlimactic piece, you know. Uh, but there's one other piece, the Master Grower, <laughs> which confers benefits that are even greater to you if you have the opportunity to use it. Uh, you know, timing really matters in UFTA, just like it does in other games. Uh, you really have to uh, uh, take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. And so, uh, the Master Grower card is no exception if you make wise use of it. You'll find that uh, you'll have some impressive uh, maneuvering and uh, machinations at the end of the game. So, uh, in this particular example, we're just going to go over uh, that particular in-game scenario. Uh, what we've done is we've emptied the emptied the bag of all the crops, and then we refilled it. And so now we're just going to play to the refill point. I mean, I'm sorry, we're going to play until the bag is empty uh, the second go around all right so for some people this would be the extended version of the game uh, if they're not used to, to refilling the bag and starting from that point so uh, this might be uh, useful in new territory for you so anyway so let's get started um, you'll see that our game is already in progress um, we're basically uh, you know nine-tenths of the way through the game most everything has been purchased that's going to be purchased, uh, what money has been made. Uh, everyone's going to start with 60 tokens. We're going to pretend it's a three-way tie. And then we're just going to see what happens based on who has a Master Grower and who doesn't. Uh, player A over here has a farm crew, but no Master Grower. And then the other two uh, growers have the Master Grower card uh, each. So uh, let's just see what happens. Okay. Here we go. Starting off, so we have the farm crew. We'll probably load up our stuff. And we're assuming, of course, this is the, uh, the typically American selfish game, where you, uh, uh, you're not, you're not uh, cooperating, but you're competing directly against each other. So that's the form of game that most of us are familiar with, even though UFTA has the flexibility to be played in many different ways, uh, one of which is also cooperative. So there's that point. Okay, so we've loaded up our stuff. This and we've seeded. We have the farm crew. And we have crop insurance. So that's good. Okay. And we have university cards. So you might suspect, uh, um, even though we're testing the Master Grower, <laughs> there's other aspects of gameplay that, that might arise uh, in late game features that uh, make a huge difference. And so let's take a look at one of them right here. This is an adversity card. 
owned by one of the growers. And so, uh, you know, the power of this car can't be understated. Uh, it, really, it really has a tremendous influence over the rest of the game. So this grower is going to be very savvy about when and where to play that, that float card. Uh, so that might throw a little bit of a, a wrench into my plans of, uh, you know, testing the Master Grower, but we'll see. You know, it's a, to me it's a more accurate test to keep uh, other variables in that might make a difference. Because that's what you ultimately want, right? You don't want to test scenarios that are so outlandish and so ridiculous that uh, they, they're never going to crop up in normal gameplay. So, anyway, here's a one. <laughs> Collect 10 tokens. That's the random bit of life that you can't account for. Kind of like dark matter, dark energy. Uh, we don't know what's going on. We know that we don't know. Okay, so here's a six. They're gonna be productive over here. Okay, so this person has three actions. It's going to be this. Two, four, six, eight. So we have eight tokens going over here. And the disc owner. now in the late stage of the game planting really matters uh, not only does it uh, affect how you're going to be able to score but it also affects uh, uh, how things come out of the, how things come out of the bag the crop order that, uh, and what goes into the discard pile because uh, everything's going to be in flux and moving around in the market unless of course there's fender, fender doodles on there uh, but uh, yeah, the market is highly volatile at the end of the game because of these uh, these constant changes in the, what, where the crops are going, what they're what they're doing. So let's try peas and kale, which we definitely want out there. Peas and kale don't have radishes. Okay, so a two crop combo is set up there. That's a little disappointing because you, you're always hoping for higher scores, higher scoring opportunities. But it's a la vie, right? I mean, you play with the hand that you're dealt, which is, you know, sometimes rotten. Okay. So now we're going to go to the king. Let's see, we planted. Oh, we also have 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 tokens goes to this card. So we disc and we seeded. Oh, but now we have our third action. <laughs> very easy for me to get ahead of myself because uh, uh, it's just easy to lose track of actions. That's part of the challenge of Ufta, by the way. If you need something that's a lifelong challenge, Ufta provides it. You really have to keep track of your stuff. Okay, so here we have the Cultivate. That'll be our third action. Nobody owns the cultivator. So in total, we spent two, four, six, eight, eight, 
16, 24 tokens. So 30 minus 24 is 6 back. And then, do we want to protect on top of that? Well, we have crop insurance, so there really is no need. Uh, even though sabotage could happen, we, we might want to protect against these adversity cards that are floating around. Alright, so we'll take the money. 30. Protect our top assets. So really, you know, this is uh, <laughs> the wealthy person's territory, right? Uh, we're operating with uh, tremendous confidence. So we have four. Having, having uh, you know, worked our way toward the top. Uh, so here's a four. They have the farm crew. Oh, but they also have the high tunnel. So we're going to take advantage of the high tunnel. crew so nobody else uh, we're not renting any equipment from others since we have the farm crew okay so that's two four six eight ten that's 20 tokens and we'll go ahead and harvest and I think did this correctly. We've got beans and squash, spinach and cucumbers. So we have a four crop combo. Wow. Talk about uh, tremendous firepower late in the game. Four crop combo with squash. Beans. Yeah, so beans are on beans, squash is on squash. Spinach, cucumbers, and cucumbers. So it's 14 plus 10, 24, and another 4, which is 28. Alright, so we take 28 and we multiply by 4 uh, because it's a 4 crop combo. So what is that? 28 by 4, that's 120. Minus 2, 4, 6, 8. 120 minus 8 should be. 112. And then we've got peas. Peas is on the wrong one, but it's ripe in the market. So we collect nine. Well, it's a very impressive payoff. Very impressive payoff. So we scored. 121, so 12 tokens goes to last place. That's our duty to our fellow man to lift them up. Okay, so here we go. That was an impressive thing. crops out of here, and this speeds the game along pretty quickly. So can we keep rid of two, three, four. 
Okay, so moving on. Six. Ooh, sabotage. Right, so here's an important timeout. Uh, we've got a critical decision to make with the grower B over here. They have two adversity cards, but they, they've rolled a six. They've essentially rolled the, uh, the warmonger uh, roll, right? Because you can raid, or return, or remove. So what are we going to do? Let's take a look at our cards. We do that. Or we could do that. Nice. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do... is we're going to play this card. So this is an activity, not an action, right? We're going to play this card on them. Nasty business, right? Okay, so that means... Now notice that uh, they don't lose the tokens. The tokens are just, uh, you know, in, in some cases they might be removed from the game, but in others it might just go right back to the grower's uh, general funds on their farm. So what we're doing in this case is we're removing the funds via the card, and now what we're going to do is we're going to probably use one action to remove a crop, or we could uh, rate it and just make it one of ours. piece which removes their four crop combo possibility so that's good and then we like peace because not only is it right but it's also uh, it goes with our squad so this is looking very good That was my first action. Let's go with the second action. This grower actually has three actions, right? So that's that's wonderful. Uh, three actions. In fact, I could use another action. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, it's so rare that we have the master grower card that I'm a little befuddled. I don't know uh, what my opportunities are or what I'm losing when I fail to do something. Okay, let's just figure this out together. I'm going to go ahead and use this action to disc for free. And then our final action is to play it. 2, 4, 6, 8. how I don't put uh, it's up to you you can decide how much uh, hunger how many marker tokens you want to place on your on your assets that's it, totally up to you but you can definitely lose a lot if somebody has the uh, flood card right then you're in trouble so let's just do this Be on the safe side. No 
tractor available for one round. That hurts. Okay, so cucumber KOPs. Now we're moving on. Well, let's say we'll go ahead and gamble. One, two, three, four, five, six rolls. Six rolls. Okay, so that was serious uh, debt. I'm not sure it was worth it. Uh, four rolls would be ten tokens. Definitely lost at the uh, the gambling table, right? That was a big loss. Okay, so, but we can be productive. We've got the farm crew. And we're gonna clean it like crazy. Carrots and cane. So you can kind of see in advance uh, how important the late game deci decisions in Oopta will become, right? Uh, every, every, <laughs> every single decision matters. It can be agonizing, right? So you best be, you know, really, really thinking about it. Okay. Um, now we want to place... But we could play. Check it out. This was the threat looming, right? Well, we're going to play it on this grower over here. Remove all crops. I'm, I'm sorry, it's remove three quarters of crops. So basically, you have to count up everything they have, which is three, six, nine, twelve. They have twelve viable items, which means we have to remove nine of them. So it would be one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we go with nine. Nine is going to be. I think we're going to choose potatoes. Ouch. Okay, yeah, no insurance over there, so that was a mighty loss. A huge loss. Devastating. Completely decimated by flood, which is what you don't want. <laughs> okay, so there's that. This person's going to protect their assets. Oh, they have crop insurance. You can't protect against sabotage. Oh, wait, yes, they can. They have the farm crew. This is kind of nice. If you happen to own the farm crew and crop insurance by gains in, uh, that nullifies some adversity cards and sabotage. So that's a huge, uh, huge advantage. We'll see if that's uh, the case. Okay, so here we go. End of turn. Four. So now we're regrouping. Here's a tricky scenario that doesn't come up unless you have the master grower. Uh, I could go ahead and produce these crops, go ahead and uh, follow up with that, or I could uh, I could plant another crop and then do production. That would take three actions. 
peas and squash, chard. I do have broccoli, so maybe it's worth doing, right? Could be. Okay, let's see what happens. I plant one item. First action. This person gets something. And then we cultivate all four. I have the trading house as well. We cultivate all four, so that's two, four, six, eight tokens. To oh, nobody owns the cultivator. So that's ten, eight, nine Then we look at this and we say, let's go ahead and harvest this is our final action. Two, four, six, eight. Lay on the harvester, so now you get eight. Okay, so we have broccoli and chard, peas and squash. We've got broccoli, we've got chard. Chard is uh, six tokens. Broccoli is nine. I'm sorry, it's 12. So 12 and six is 18, becomes 36. Then we have peas and squash. Squash on squash action is four tokens. Peas is not on the right one, it's 7, it's 11, becomes 22. Okay, so that's 22. Tokens goes to last place. Yeah, you'll notice that uh, the game rapidly develops at the end, right? Because most people have uh, the highest level of farm productivity, so <laughs> the crops just vanish immediately. We're down to only a few turns. Okay, so there's that. They've scored, and then they grab four out of here. Diversity card. Uh, we can't. They have crop insurance, they have crop insurance. So maybe it's best, it's kind of nice. The uh, adversity cards that you purchase still have value at the end of the game. Uh, and they can still earn tokens for you every time growing season starts over. So in that sense, they're, they're benevolent either way, either way, right? Uh, if you play them or not. So that's kind of nice. Okay, here's a six. You can sabotage. Yes. Ah, uh, we can't though. The only grower in this particular case is this one who has something to sabotage. Uh, but they have the farm curve, which repels all saboteurs. So we have to change up what we're doing. We've got to make our adjustments on the fly according to conditional and situational. 
occurrences in the game. So what we're going to do instead is just focus on our productivity over here. And I can use an action. Let's see, I've got peas. the greenhouse yeah. can't really do it because there's no beans that's what I was going for so I was just thinking of a, a new, a new uh, situation that arose just now, and that is uh, that there's peas and chard at the bottom of this, but there's kales and kale and beans at the top, and I'm wondering if that could be a four crop combo. You could use the wraparound effect to your advantage. I never really thought about it that way. Fascinating stuff. Hmm. I love the, uh, you know, <laughs> Oofta never runs out of uh, ways to ways to surprise me, right? Uh, <laughs> even though I created it, like I said, the permutations are endless. And of course, my <laughs> I just have a human mind. I cannot fathom what uh, all the possibilities could be, right? Uh, and I don't think I could control them either. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we'll see what happens here. on what we've got. We'll just plant more kale. So first action is to plant kale. Cultivate. Okay, so that's two tokens. Then we're going to go ahead and harvest with the master grower. No, actually, no, we can't do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and harvest. We got peas not on the right one, chard not on the right one. And then we have kale. So we have a three crop combo. So we got seven plus one is eight. Kale on the right one, which is 15. So it's 8 and 15. It's 23. 8 and 15 is 23, and then we triple that to 69. 69. Seven tokens goes to the last place. Which is still this person. Okay, so this. Is here. Which is just one token. Uh, that 
that was a mistake. I shouldn't have planted kale. I shouldn't have planted kale because it was at the 12 spot, and then uh, I, since I already had that to harvest, I harvested it at the high spot, but then it fell to the low spot. So that's something you have to <laughs> take into account when you're playing Ufta. You've got to be sharp. Kale went down to the one spot, and so I messed up. So one. Oh well. Okay. And grab these. Replace four. Is the key. broccoli used to radishes. Here's a one. Don't have to do it, but it is a loss of a turn. I have crop insurance, which means uh, I can disregard what's on the card. Okay, so here's a two. I think we'll go ahead and Use a trading house. That's right. I can use a trading house and disrupt this grower's stuff. They've got carrots, and broccoli together. Notice how you know, everything is connected in Upta ultimately. You find that there's so much uh, going on that, that is, uh, you're not conscious of. Uh, there's just so many other things going on <laughs> that it can be kind of mind-boggling. Um, when I removed the kale, or I harvested the kale for grower C, what happened was it bumped the kale down to the one spot, which means they, this grower A has kale planted in their fields and it has no value, or very low value. Oh, but there's another thought. You see, another thought arises kind of subconsciously because here's the deal. Even though the kale's at the one spot, it has the opportunity to become the undercut crop. And you, yes, you can harvest on one turn and score that undercut crop. If you have, uh, happen to have that crop in your hand, Wow. Unexpected turns. Unexpected turn of event is which uh, keeps us spry. We always have to be kind of wary of what we're doing. And uh, that's why I think uh, Ooft is going to last. It's going to last a long time. So, here we go. We got a three. This. We've already gambled though, so it's just bad luck. I will buy another card. Notice how there's no limit on the amount of adversity cards that you can purchase. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Uh, okay, so four. 
before we want to be super productive, maybe it ends the game. I don't know. Let's see. If I disk and I play it. Cucumbers, it's a tree crop combo. Okay, so we've got that. Planet, we disc and we planted so the person who owns a disc here gets eight. And then the person over here uh, has to pay 16 total. person who owns the cedar gets eight. All right. Okay, so that was two actions. They have the master grower, so we're going to uh, execute our third and final action. not what you want, that's for sure. Bad rolls late in the game are just something you have to uh, have to deal with. Three, we're going to gamble. Two, okay, so we'll pay three tokens. But now we're productive. Oh, and then we rolled a six, so yet again we have this uh, this agonizing decision to make because now we can go on the offensive Right? We can tear down somebody else's stuff, or we can build ourselves up, stay on the home front, and uh, really score big. So what should I do? <laughs> well, everything is uh, always up in the air, and you don't really know. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we'll just focus... Well, Okay, so I think we're gonna go on the on the war path. Oh, we can't because I have the farm crew. Yikes! Yeah, I think that's interesting. Basically, Grower A is powerful right now. They've earned the most tokens, but they're powerful because they have the most defense. They can't. Uh, Nothing bad can happen to them because they own crop insurance and the farm crew. So that cinches it. The decision making is easier for grower B because they're thinking about just um, production and harvesting. So maybe ending the game. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Disking for free. I use a trading house to bump the corn up. And we've got radishes. This for free, we're seeding 2468. Goes to the cedar odor. And then we're 
we're cultivating. That's our final, our final decision because now we've uh, emptied the bag, we've run out of crops, and so we initiate final harvest. And then before we do that, we kind of want to take notice, make sure we know who has a farm crew and who has the harvester. Because the harvester owner, you know, that particular uh, tile in the game is still active, right? And so uh, we really have to uh, pay attention to who has what and who can still score off of each other. Okay, so... This person uh, ended the game, so they're going to start off. Go right into final harvest immediately. So it's going to be tallying up our stuff. So we got squash on squash and corn on corn, which is a two crop combo. Oh, so now we're going to take a timeout and look at this. You're not going to believe this. By scoring our, our best stuff on this particular turn, it bumps the kale up. And what is this grower going to do? Well, I think we're okay. Because if we think about it, this grower is not going to have an opportunity to score extra points because these crops are not cultivated in final harvest. That's their final, that's their status. Nothing can uh, be done to change it. And so <laughs> they're stuck with what they've got. So I don't think it matters. We dodged a bullet. So here's corn, here's spinach. We've got 15 and nine, which is uh, 24 becomes 48. We had radishes and radishes. Radishes is 12. Sorry, it's 9 and 10. So it's 19 more tokens. Okay, subsidy. It's not easy to figure out now. Does it go to this person? I think it goes over here. Yeah. So 30, 40, 50, 65, 67, 68. So seven tokens goes to last place. that. Now we move on to grower C. Grower C is going to go ahead and harvest. Everything is ripe, so they get full credit. Uh, they own the harvester. Oh, the harvester owner gets to collect two, four, six, eight. This person. Okay, so we have corn. Potatoes and cucumbers. So two two crop combos. Two two crop combos doesn't necessarily equate to a four crop combo. So that's something to bear in mind. You can earn both, but it's not always. Uh, you can earn two two crop combos, but you have to check and make sure uh, are those two two crop combos adjacent to each other in the market. If they're not, uh, you don't score the four crop combo. So it's pretty straightforward. It's easier to see in person. Okay, so here's spinach and corn. Spinach and corn. Spinach on spinach, corn on corn is 10 and 4, which is 14. And it's 28. And we've got cucumbers on cucumbers, potatoes on potatoes. 
So now we really do need to pay attention to who has what to determine. finish with uncultivated crops for grower A. So they have two kales, which is six, one, seven. Broccoli, It's two tokens in the last as a subsidy. All right, so that's going to do it for this particular uh, session of UFTA. We're going to come back, we're going to add up our totals, and then see. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and see uh, who won. Our criterion, our criteria for winning is going to be based on how many actual hunger tokens were earned. So I'm not including any assets that were already owned uh, when we started the game. So in this corner, we've got we got 194 for grower A. We've got 160 for grower B. We've got 203 for grower C. So it turns out that grower C was in fact our winner, although not by much, uh, with only a difference of about 10 tokens, right? So uh, they own the master grower, so that's not surprising. And they own crop insurance. So. Uh, you can take away what you will from this game. Uh, maybe the Master Grower doesn't make that much difference, but uh, I think you'll find it's incredibly lucrative compared to the farm crew. Uh, you can really earn quite a bit as long as you have those extra sessions coming to you. And unfortunately with UFTA, there's no guarantees at all. <laughs> and so there's no certainty as to whether or not the game will play out as long as you need it to. Uh, for the master grower to make its impact. So these are some of the cool issues that uh, are surrounding UFTA that I hope uh, will come across when you own your copy someday. So until next time, keep on playing UFTA. Bye everybody.